Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. Let's get going. I'm going to go the scenic way today. Because it's a lovely day. Oh, there's a car. Oh, now, this, this wood I keep talking about, that's all this wood over here. I don't know if you can, can you see all those bonfires? Can you see the bonfires? There's a lot of big bonfires over here. Anyway, I've been prattling on about this stuff. And there's been no webcam footage. So, you'll all have been thinking, what's he going on about all that wood? Tons of wood that's been cut. And there it is. Now, let me put my wing mirror in. Because that can save you 200 pounds, that. It's just that simple act of just putting your wing mirror in. So how are you, anyway? Are you well? Are you doing well? Good, good, good. Let's get the screen clean so you can see where we're going. level up the uh, horizon so you don't look like you're flying along in a roll. Excellent, everything's working now. The old um, <coughs> excuse me. It's going to be a scorcher today. It was about 20 degrees yesterday. We're only, it's only the end of March, 31st of March. It's going to be about 25 today, apparently. Let's get the blower on the windscreen. Get myself defogged. No, I don't have a heated front windscreen. Thanks for asking. There we go. So, it's going to be a gorgeous day. And I think it might be... Today, Wednesday the 31st of March, might be the day that my fifth grandchild is born. So Mrs. Angry has been called over. Because uh, things are starting to happen. So we'll wait and see what the day brings. Might be a false alarm. It might be tomorrow. So I thought I'd talk about... Um, maternity and dentistry and give it the dubious benefit of my 40 years worth of experience I haven't quite decided whether to call today's episode from here to maternity <laughs> much as I do like that title it is a bit overdone so I think I'll just call it maternity but uh, now, you may think uh, maternity only affects women, but it doesn't. It affects employers. And uh, the government has seen fit to pile a ton of uh, obligations on employers in respect of pregnant employees. And uh, you know, we have no choice but to abide by them. The biggest problem in my uh, estimation is just a simple calculation of their pay. You know, making sure that they're paid the right amount. And, and then the second biggest problem is obviously uh, having to do without them because uh, the rather extensive uh, maternity and paternity uh, leave that's come in in my time as an employer uh, and it has a disproportionate, I mean, it has a devastating impact on a small business. Uh, when you've got like a key worker who's trained up in a way that only, you know, that, that is totally optimized for your business. And then they're taken out of the workforce for three months, six months, 12 months. It is absolutely insupportable. And I don't blame employers, very small empl micro employers for becoming defensive about employing anyone who might uh, want to start or be in the middle of, of uh, having a family. It's 
just uh, the disincentives are there. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that, that they should do that or that they can even they can do that legally. It would be completely illegal to make an employment choice on the basis of uh, whether or not an employee was likely to start a family and, and need a lot of time off. But um, all I'm saying is that it's uh, a business can be severely impacted if they end up in that situation. And also that the sort of decisions about who to hire are not, they're not subject to review. You know, I mean, it would be different if, uh, I don't know, uh, God forbid, that you interviewed for a job and, and did six interviews and then had to write a report on who you hired and why and send that in to some sort of central equality commissioner to uh, see whether they're prepared to give you a rubber stamp on whether the whole thing was done in their opinion uh, properly and the best candidate was hired. You know, we still do have that discretion. Um, now, it goes without saying that you can't uh, ask questions like, are you thinking of starting a family? Or, you know, would you like to have a family? Blah, blah, blah. Um, because they don't really relate to, I mean, I know they relate to the health of the business indirectly, but they don't really relate to the suitability for the job. And also, I've got a lot of sympathy with, uh, you know, being the father of two daughters, I have a lot of sympathy with the argument that the uh, they have an extra hurdle to jump, if you like, in that they are possibly seen by some employers as less um, providing less of a return on capital, if you like. You know, I mean, one of them, for example, is a pilot, and I can see a problem. I can see from the from the airline's point of view. I can see that to to invest all that money in training a pilot. Uh, someone as a pilot who then uh, spends a lot of time on maternity leave he's very or paternity leave I suppose is is less efficient you know but then on the other hand you do have to understand that uh, reproducing and having children is is fundamental to the survival of the species and therefore it should be uh, you know someone who's in a job should be able to do it and not just leave it to everybody who's unemployed to, to produce the children. So, now, my point is, and you probably already connected this yourself, is that it's, it's easy for British Airways, or it's much, much easier for British Airways, to accept that at any particular time, a certain percentage of their, yeah, yeah, what are you doing down such a small road, you idiot? Bloody great red van, it's got, it's got chevrons painted all over it for visibility it's so big and then it's just bombing down this tiny little country road taking up more than half the carriageway so British Airways you know I mean they can still function with 5% of their workforce off on to see the sick or on maternity leave they're still running at 95% capacity if Lou was to uh, have a baby, I'd be I'd be on five percent capacity <laughs> because I'd have to. I mean, I certainly would have to take on someone else and get them trained up. And then you've got all the ennui of not not being able to ask when the whoever's on maternity leave to ask when they're going to come back they can decide to come back pretty much at their discretion. And in the meantime, you've got someone who's probably very nice, very capable, very highly trained, and, uh, hello, where's my traffic lights? They're not there. <laughs> Excellent, those traffic lights have been there about two years. Yeah, so, 
and then then you then because unless you can re-employ that person or or take them both back on, you then got the situation of um, you know you're going to have to let the replacement go, which is you know and you might after a year you're probably getting on with them quite well and possibly they're even a slightly better uh, replacement than the one who's coming back who's going to be a year out of practice at that point. Not to mention have a load of, um, you know, calls from the babysitter or the uh, the uh, nurse or the primary school saying, little so-and-so's, little so-and-so's coughing. Can you come and collect him? We're worried he's got the lurgy. So, fortunately, there are uh, there, there is still quite a big reservoir of uh, potential employees in the system who are not, uh, you know, who, who've had a family, or who have got got a family, and um, are pretty stable, you know. And also, uh, there's the other end of the spectrum where you take on someone who's like 18 or 19, who's really is not going to start a family for a few years anyway, you know what women are like. These days they tend to be waiting later, waiting longer. And so they're, you know, it might be a good 10 years or so before they uh, find themselves in the family way. I once had a nurse who, uh, she's a lovely, lovely girl, very, fitness orientated, very, went down the gym every day, you know, annoying as hell, and uh, let's get out of here, we've got, yes. Fran comes Fran. yeah, no, lovely girl, and, and a very, very good nurse, I mean, sort of really intuitive and knew what you wanted before you knew yourself, sort of thing, in the way that all good nurses are, and one day she came to me and she said, I am um, like to give him my notice, and uh, so I'm saying, "All right, no, I'm sorry about that, you know." But as, I, as I've said before, on these things, we always work on the basis of it's right for them, it's right for us. We never, we never try and offer more money or complain that they're leaving or try and change their mind. Ask them, you know, or, or moan about their reasons or everything. It's just it's straightforward. Okay, fine. Um, uh, the reason she was leaving was that um, she wanted a job where she could get a bit more exercise. She was fed up with just sitting down as a dental nurse and then going down the gym. So she cast around for a job that, you know, where people were naturally naturally exercised. And she came up with a couple. I suppose waitressing was one of them. Uh, but she didn't fancy that. She wanted to work for the post office. And that was because she could get up early, she could walk five miles, uh, whatever, and uh, you know, be home by mid-afternoon. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I can understand, you know, the thinking behind that. Anyway, uh, I think it was a week later. She came back to know another word with you, okay? And uh, she said, I want my job back, and I said, oh, why? What's happened? And she said, I just found out I'm pregnant. And uh, she had a long service history with us, which would have entitled her to um, uh, maternity statutory, full statutory maternity pay. But if she'd left us and gone to this new job, then she would have been a complete new recruit and, in, and not entitled to anything other than, than the most basic uh, maternity pay, you know. So and it was a difficult decision for her because, uh, you know, she obviously, it was a bit embarrassing because she told us that. She hadn't said that she didn't like working there. She just said she wanted a job with a bit more exercise. And so we, uh, we, we quite understood there was no bad feeling or anything. There was no animosity there between the two sides. And to be honest with you, I was quite pleased that uh, we weren't losing her because she was such a good nurse. And the fact that she was going to work 
for us for let's say another eight or nine months was um, was a bonus for the business and I was I was happy to tell her that yeah that technically you know her notice period hadn't expired she was still employed by us and so we we just um, forgot about the whole thing but that's uh, an example of uh, one of the problems that you might run into I know I only ever run into it once that's a pretty weird scenario but uh, that's 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 another example of a way that these stupid rules regarding maternity impact on people's real lives you know she ended up having to work in a job that she didn't like you know for the best part of a year um, and of course she didn't come back after the maternity leave and, and we didn't care because we <laughs> in a way again and that worked quite well for us because I was able to take someone else on and say to them that you're replacing a, a woman who's on maternity leave but it's 99% certain she won't come back and if she does she's going to come back as a post woman so. I'm starting to look around at these fields and you see that uh, at the edges of the fields they have like a raised Long, a long line, the hill called a berm, and uh, these berms, um, you see them at military bases because they they reduced uh, the chance of people both looking in and driving in as they're driving past. And there's a scam. No, it's not a scam, but I mean, there's a thing going on at the moment whereby uh, constructors who are digging need to get rid of uh, hardcore and topsoil and it's becoming very expensive to get rid of it so what they do is they cast their eye around for anyone who might want it you know and uh, what they'll do is they'll if you've got a bit of land they are not allowed to dump dump the uh, hardcore and the topsoil on your land if it raises the height of the land um, but they can build these things called berms along the edges and you, you see them quite frequently um, on land which is might be subject to uh, travelers turning up and just driving onto and, and making a travelers camp there and what they do is they they put a berm along the public facing edge which you could you couldn't get a caravan over and so it safeguards the land and apparently what they, they'll do the, the builders will do all this all you have to do is own the land and uh, they'll come along they'll dump the topsoil they'll, they'll dump the um, hardcore oh, there we go there's a queue of 10 cars up from the left look. oh wait a minute here down there we go They dump the hardcore, they shape it into a berm, and then they put topsoil over the top of it and uh, plant it up, and so uh, a bit like a motorway embankment, basically. And so before you know it, you've got berms all around your fields. So obviously it reduces the productive uh, area, but uh, in, re in, in return, they will give you uh, about £100 a lorry load, which is uh, can, works out about £1,200 a week. There's one on the right here, look, you can see it. Oh, well, you probably did see it. So you're going to see, <laughs> you're seeing these berms sprout up all over the place, everywhere that someone says, yeah, yeah, you can put a bit of soil there. There's another one on the right here. New landscaping. I think uh, sort of anyone who's got a bit of land, that's that's Manston Airport, and it's owned by a private company. So I suppose that they want to get a bit of cash. Then they're sort of that land is there for the to be developed, you know, in whatever way necessary. Um, farmers, I think, are a little bit more discriminating. I think if they've 
had a if they've got a feel that it's been flat since the Magna Carta then they don't really want a load of builders uh, uh, hardcore along along one or two edges of it unless it is as I say it is vulnerable to uh, invasion so they offered me a they offered to come and look at my little field again I don't really want you know it's it's got a nice uh, all the screen I don't really want to tank traps along the outside of it <laughs> yeah so that's maternity and then of course once uh, if you've got someone who's got a young family then uh, you have to accept that you know they, they are going to want to look after it and if anything does uh, you know if they do get a call from school or something then you have to say to them okay drop everything off you go and it can be inconvenient uh, but my advice is just to go along with it you know go with the flow you're not really going to get much how can I put it your, your employees will be unhappy if you try and prevent them dealing with crises and don't forget that you know I mean I've my, my children are in their 30s now and I've got grandchildren and uh, they're, they're having all the problems that I used to have with all the wife ringing up crying and saying oh my God, the kids are driving me mad you know it's alright for you you're at work all day when you're knackered and so I've done all that I've been there done all that but for a lot of these young people it's their first time it's their first rodeo you know so you have to just stay sympathetic and help them out you know in in possibly the same way that your job or your life or your parents your your inheritance you know your things have helped you out in the past you've relied on other people's kindness and uh, and now other people might be relying on yours so I don't know uh, I mean I've said that I I'm going to have to say to all the patients that I might have to rush off today it depends I'll probably only be to do a bit of ferrying of the other grandchildren around if they're in the way but, um, but I'm going to tell everybody that so that I might I might have to rush off and cancel a short notice. We'll wait and see. But my patients are pretty good, you know. They're they're pretty tolerant. They understand. Again, you know, they've got children of their own. They've had children of their own. They know that there are some special. I had. I did have one old boy. And this is when my first daughter was born in 1980. I think it was the second one was born in 1987. And uh, I was, uh, you know, I was a young, it was my second child. And I said to um, the patients, um, I am going to take some time off with my wife. The first two weeks, I said, I'm going to be, I'll, I'll be cancelling everyone at short notice and going to stay at home. But I don't know when because I don't know when she's going to give birth. So anyway, this old boy went ballistic. He said, what's this, what's this about me being cancelled, you know? You having two weeks off because you've had a baby? He said, well, what, uh, what's that got to do with you, sort of thing? <coughs> so I said, no. I said, I know, I've learned from the first baby that it's best just to cancel everything and just to spend the first two weeks with your wife. Just, you know, because that's when, you know, all the breastfeeding problems are and, and everything else and they need support so uh, me and him party company yeah uh, he was very much like uh, you know in my day you know in my day uh, the women used to go off somewhere and then uh, and 18 years later they'd come back with a child that had been educated at private school you know, I don't see why I should have to uh, get my dental appointment cancelled so me and him uh, party ways pretty quick Anyway, nice talking to you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.